In this video, we'll talk about the exponential form for complex numbers, which is based on Euler's formula. So we saw before that we can write a complex number in polar form, which is written in the form shown here. Z is equal to the modulus of Z, or its absolute value, how big it is, times cosine theta for the x-coordinate, plus i sine theta for the y-coordinate. The question is, is there a nicer way to view this sort of setup? It turns out there is, using ideas of Taylor series from earlier in the semester. So I want to take this part here, the cosine theta plus i sine theta part, and try to write that out using Taylor series and see what that gives me. So we know we have Maclaurin series formulas for both cosine and sine, which we'll write here below, which are given here, right? The cosine formula is just negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial theta to the 2n. And for the sine theta, it's a similar formula with 2n plus 1 on both the factorial and the power. Now, I want to bring complex numbers into this, which is a tool we didn't have before for analyzing these power series. And it also makes sense to bring them in because of the i that's sitting in our expression up here. So I'm going to use the fact that negative 1 is i squared. That's the definition of i. It's the square root of minus 1. So if I square out, I get minus 1. I'm going to put this into both of my expressions here. I'm going to replace the minus 1s in the minus 1 to the n by i squared. What does that give me? That gives me that cosine theta is sum n from 0 to infinity now of i squared to the n over 2n factorial theta to the 2n. But now that i squared to the n is just i to the 2n. I can combine that with the theta that's right next to it to give me sum n from 0 to infinity 1 over 2n factorial i theta to the 2n. I can do the same thing with the sine term. So sine theta is sum n from 0 to infinity of now i squared to the n over 2n plus 1 factorial theta to the 2n plus 1. I want to play the same trick, but I need one more i to make that happen, right? Up top here, I have an i to the 2n, and here I have a theta to the 2n plus 1. I can put those together, but I'm missing one factor of i. So I'll write this as a 1 over i, that'll give me the 2n plus 1 that I need, sum from n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial i theta to the 2n plus 1. Now let's go back to our original expression. I wanted to deal with cosine theta plus i sine theta. Let's write that out and see what that gives me based on these two forms here. Cosine theta plus i sine of theta is then the cosine term plus the sine term, but I'm multiplying by an i, so it's going to cancel that 1 over i in front of the sine term. But now what do we see here? These sums are basically the same. They both have i theta to a power, 1 over that power factorial in the denominator, but they're covering different terms. This here covers all the even terms, whereas this here covers all the odd terms. Well, so what does that mean? Well, if I have all the even terms starting at 0 and all the odd terms starting at 1, and then put them together, I just get all the natural numbers. I get all the terms that I need to fill up an entire normal series. So this tells me now that cosine theta plus i sine of theta is the same thing as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times i theta to the n. For n equals 0, it comes from the cosine term. For n equals 1, it comes from the sine term. n equals 2 comes from the cosine term. n equals 3 comes from the sine term. And they go back and forth the entire way, and I get all the terms I need out of that expression there. Now, to wrap all this up, what is this? I have a sum from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial times something to the n. This is our Maclaurin series for e to the x. So what does that then tell me? That tells me that cosine theta plus i sine theta is the same thing as e to the i theta, because my argument in the Chlorin series was i theta. And this here is Euler's formula. And the benefit it has for us in this circumstance is I now have a nice new way of looking at complex numbers, a nice way to write them that's going to be really helpful later on. So the polar form of a complex number is written z is the absolute value of z, or the modulus of z, times e to the i theta. This exactly comes from the fact that we can also write this as z times cosine theta plus 
i sine of theta. We've just rewritten now that cosine theta plus i sine theta as this e to the i theta. An important thing to realize here is with this setup, this leading coefficient here must be positive. Because it's in a module, it's an absolute value, it has to be positive. So how do I get to minus one? Well, minus one is the complex number minus one plus zero i. If I write this in polar coordinates, I'm looking at the point minus one zero, which in polar coordinates is one and angle pi to point me in that direction. So I'm gonna write this out using the exponential form of the complex number. This tells me that minus one is the same thing as one for my modulus times e to the i pi, or something else you see as Euler's formula, e to the i pi plus one equals zero. Another really fancy thing that comes out of this whole idea of complex numbers and polar coordinates is this relation here. That e to the i pi, e, a transcendental number that's defined in terms of a limit, pi, thing that's defined in terms of the area of a circle, and this complex unit i, all together give me minus one. Kind of crazy, but that's what we get out of this, all this techniques and all this stuff here. And the other thing that's really good about all this stuff is it's really easy to multiply and divide complex numbers if they are in polar exponential form because all the rules for exponentials still apply to complex numbers. We're not going to prove that, but they do apply. What does this mean? Well, this means that if I have e to the i theta multiplied by e to the i phi for the angle phi, I can just write this as e to the i theta plus phi. And this is now in the proper form of a complex number in exponential form makes it really easy to multiply and divide because all the rules still work normally. If I wanted to multiply 2e to the i pi over 4 times 3e to the negative i pi over 6, those are both valid complex numbers in polar form. The modulus is going to be 2 times 3 is 6. I just multiply these two things separately to give me 6. And I'm going to add the angles. So I'll get e to the i times pi over 4 minus pi over 6, or 6e to the i pi over 12. And that's it. It's a lot easier than trying to do the distribution and show those sort of things out directly that you have to do using rectangular form. You can just do it this way with polar form. So as an example, we're going to find this quotient by first converting to exponential form. So I have 3 minus 3i and then 1 plus root 3i. You could do this the way you would before with rectangular form by finding 1 over 1 plus 3, root 3i, three solve for that complex number, then multiply normally, or you can convert to polar form. So for polar form, I need to find r and theta for both these numbers. So I have 3 minus 3i. So for that, my modulus should be square root of 9 plus 9, which is 18, or 3 roots of 2. My theta should be the inverse tangent of minus three over three, which is the inverse tangent of minus one. So I get minus pi over four, and that's the correct quadrant. I should be in the fourth quadrant with this setup here. For one plus root three i, I get that my modulus should be square root of one plus three, or two, and that my angle theta should be inverse tangent of root three over one, inverse tangent of root three, which is going to be pi over 3. Now, this means that the quotient I want to find, so 3 minus 3i over 1 plus root 3i, is the same as dividing 3 square roots of 2 e to the minus i pi over 4 divided by 2 e to the i pi over 3. But this is, works out easily by multiplication exponential rules. This becomes a 3 root 2 over 2 e to the negative i times pi over 4 plus pi over 3, because that pi over in the bottom becomes a negative sign in the exponent because it's in the bottom, which is 3 root 2 over 2, we'll leave that alone, e to the minus i 7 pi over 12. So it's much easier to divide and multiply complex numbers if they have them in exponential form as opposed to being rectangular form. That's the other main point here, is that complex numbers can also be written in this exponential form, which makes it much easier to divide and multiply and solve equations if things are set up appropriately. The main point here is knowing how is this form derived, why does this form work, and being able to use it to solve these sorts of multiplication division problems when you're looking at complex numbers.